Greetings to one and all in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom knowing is life eternal. It's so wonderful to be connecting with you once again uh, this evening. We are all continuing here with uh, the conference. We said here uh, it's a lamp for a household. So this is the Good Friday conference. This is the Good Friday convocation. We are continuing to celebrate uh, that which the Lord has accomplished for us in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to really thank you for uh, connecting with us. We want to thank you for uh, liking, sharing, subscribing to all our social media platforms. I'm going to encourage you to do the same even at this moment that could go out there, like, share, subscribe to all our platforms, social media platforms, to our YouTube page, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and visit our website, shakainatebenakel.co.za. So thank you very much for following. And the good Lord uh, do you well. So we, we started with the conference uh, uh, yesterday. We started with the conference yesterday. And we really are thankful for uh, your uh, watching, that you watched us and you were following. We want to appreciate the Lord for you. Uh, my spiritual father, Apostle Dr. Daniel Zeta, ministered here yesterday morning. And then uh, my spiritual mother, mi prophetess, uh, Millicent Zeta, ministered here on yesterday evening. So we really want to bless the Lord for them. We will be continuing tomorrow, uh, Sunday. It's a resurrection uh, Sunday, the resurrection services. Seven, uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then we'll have also an evening service on Sunday. So we want to encourage you to please... Uh, connect and the good lord will bless you so speaking to you here is raymond uh, we are continuing here with our passover conference the fulfillment and satisfaction where we are celebrating the passover we are celebrating that which god did i'm going to ask you to go with me uh, to the word of the lord we're going to just read uh, john chapter number 19 verse number 38 until verse number 42 john chapter 19 verse 38 until 42 i'm reading esv after these things joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of jesus but secretly for fear of the jews asked pilate that he might take away the body of jesus and pilate gave him permission so he came and took his and he took away his body nicodemus also who earlier had come to jesus by night came bringing a mixture of myra alus about 75 pounds in weight and so they took the body of jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices as the burial custom of the jews and now the place where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid and so because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. They laid Jesus there. I'm going to, go into, uh, just to try to harmonize this uh, uh, gospel of John with Matthew 27, uh, chapter number 57, 60 to, through to 61. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, uh, named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had, uh, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and other Mary were there sitting uh, opposite the tomb. Father, I bless you for the reading of your word. I appreciate you for times such as this. We are looking forward, my Father, to be impacted by your word. May you do it uh, through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, beloved, I want to... Uh, uh, Quickly look at few things here, and then we are going to maybe there in between we'll take one or two prayer points. But uh, my intention is just really to look at uh, a few things here, and the good Lord will do as well. 
Now, I'm, I'm speaking here on the subject that says when you are most needed, when you are most needed, that's what we are talking about. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that some of you can relate uh, 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 to uh, people in relationship. Uh, you can have that. You say, I, I relate to being deserted at the time I needed my, friend, my friends most. You can relate that I, I, in relationships and in relationships that I'm having, there was a time that I needed people the most. Now, here we are speaking about when you are most needed. There are times, as I said, that you need people close to you most. Now, oftentimes it has been proven uh, that uh, those who appear to have been prepared and ready uh, for a specific moment, I I even if they, they didn't, maybe make a promise, even if they didn't commit themselves to that moment. But those that are ready and prepared for the specific moment, they will always come when you need them most. Now, I wish to take you back to the scripture that Jesus, as he was communicating, preparing his disciples, Jesus said these words to them. Uh, he was communicating there with them. But before that, when he went to the mountain, at, at, at Getsman, he, he took James, Peter, and John with him. The Bible says in Matthew 26, verse number 38, uh, he, he, he said that my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. You remember that story? You remember those words that Jesus spoke to the disciples? The Bible says when he was with them there, uh, they fell asleep. Three times they were falling asleep. And these were the guys that were very close to Jesus. This was the inner circle. It was the three of the twelve. So uh, he then called to them, challenged them. Let's go there uh, with me because my soul is, is very sorrowful. Jesus' soul was very sorrowful. Now he said, it is sorrowful even to death. But I am just requesting that you come with me. I'm requesting that you come with me and watch with me. Hallelujah. That's, 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 that's the words of Jesus in Matthew. Uh, and the Bible has told us that they then slept. But when you go down in the very same chapter, you will realize the time that Jesus told them that you are going to fall away. You are going to fall away. Verse number 31 to 34 of, of, of that uh, Matthew chapter 26. Jesus said to them, you will fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Verse 32, but after I am raised up, I will go before you uh, to Galilee. Peter answered, though, Peter answered him, though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this very night before the rooster crowds, you will deny me three times. That is uh, uh, Matthew 26. Uh, Peter spoke boldly that we are told that he spoke arrogantly and that I, I, I will never, even if I can, I must go with you to the point of death, I will not deny you. And the Bible then tells us that it was not only the words of Peter. Uh, it, these were the words that also uh, the disciples, other disciples echoed. They echoed because the Bible says in verse 35 that they all uh, said, all disciples said the same thing all the disciples said the same thing now this is the implication that we get in the statement of peter implication is that peter was uh, merely saying i am a true disciple i am loyal to the relationship i'm loyal to you i will follow you through and through and and that, that, that is the implication that peter was uh, uh, implying when he said no 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 even if i have to die with you i will never fall away but jesus knowing them and knowing all the people being omniscient he already told them that you will fall away and what i like about jesus he said even if you will fall away there will be a time that i will go and meet you at galilee so i'm going to encourage you that you wait for me in galilee now the disciples also arrogantly they echoed the saying uh, they implied that they are not going to deny uh, Jesus Christ. They imply that they are not going to deny uh, Jesus Christ. So, uh, and we shall prove, uh, we are going to prove that out of the disciples, uh, there is one, out of all of them, there is one who really stood by the words. He followed Jesus uh, through and through. He, he followed Jesus to the point of burial. He followed Jesus to the point 
of death. Hallelujah. But Jesus is omniscient. So this evening, let's cruise together. Hallelujah. Now, you are going to remember that when we celebrate the Passover, Passover was a very, very significant platform uh, in the earthly ministry of Jesus. Now, we will be trying then to harmonize uh, how these gospel writers wrote about this event that I'm going to talk about, the event of the burial. Because you are going to remember now we are in the Passover. Now the Passover were used to calculate, to trace the years of Jesus on earth. They used the Passover because you are going to remember that when John chapter number 2, he performed a miracle there when he told the people to just draw water out of uh, the tanks. And then uh, after drawing water, the water when they drank it, it tasted like wine. And immediately after that, the Bible says uh, the Passover feast was close, was near. The Passover feast was near. Now, that was the first Passover where you read that that miracle was bringing glory uh, to his disciples, I mean, to himself. He was revealing himself uh, to the disciples. Another second Passover, it is that Passover. Now, on the first Passover, he met up uh, with, uh, he went to the, uh, the, the temple. You remember the weeping and the cleaning of the temple, the cleansing of the temple and turning up the tables upside down. You know, you must, you must understand that the Passover was a, a celebration that was attended by many people from all over. Now, it was a good opportunity to explore it. it was a good moment to exploit people of their monies. Now, it was a good moment to make money out of the people. And now, one of the ways of making money was through sacrifices, was through those pigeons, those birds, those doves, and, and those animals, lamb, sheep, goats, and all that. They were being sold around there. Now, Jesus came during the time of the first Passover, and then he turned the table. He made a whip first, and calmly so in the the temple after making the whip he whipped all those uh, leaders uh, of uh, and then turned the tables and changed everyone and said my father's house is the house of prayer that was in the first uh, Passover the second Passover uh, then, then immediately after the first Passover there is a man called Nicodemus who saw how he spoke with authority during the time because he appeared and he started speaking and he spoke with authority hallelujah then Nicodemus the Bible says he went to him uh, during the night the second Passover then was the Passover where he was going to tell them the leaders of the Jews uh, the leaders of the Pharisees telling them that uh, I am he says before Abraham was I I am. He was telling them, I'm the bread of life. Hallelujah. That is in John chapter number 6. You will read uh, it is the second Passover in verse, from verse number 4. And the third Passover is the one we are celebrating. Now that one it is written about in John chapter number 11 from verse number 55. This now Passover, the last one, the third Passover, helps us to trace how many years Jesus lived on earth. Hallelujah. It helps us to trace for how long did he live uh, here on earth. But it's important for me to bring this background of the Passover because uh, the Passover feast uh, as it was being celebrated uh, there is something significant for that celebration. It was the lamp of a sacrifice. It was a sacrificial lamp. Now, Jesus, when John saw him, he introduced Jesus as a Passover lamp. He said, Behold the lamp that that behold the lamp that came to take away the sins of the world. Now he was introduced as the lamp. It was introduced to us and to those people by then as the lamp. John introduced him as the lamp. So it's important for me to say let's look a little bit at the Passover and then see how does this man relate to the Passovers. Hallelujah. And it, then once you understand that relationship, you are going to appreciate this Passover. So my father, Apostle Dr. Daniel Zetra, ministered yesterday and he was speaking on Good Friday on those last words that Jesus spoke. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. That's what I'm going to challenge you to visit our YouTube and begin to view that word again and the Lord bless you hallelujah but this evening beloved I want to say to you we still or I want to ask you this question where are the disciples hallelujah where are the disciples where are the disciples because we see at this now event when Jesus 
was about to be buried. It seems as if his disciples have all ran away. Hallelujah. All the disciples have now ran away except one. Hallelujah. Except one uh, who is the one or the beloved, the one whom he loved, the beloved uh, disciple. Let's look quickly, look at, at what happened today, how the gospel writers wrote about this incident. Now, we, we just read John 19 here. We read Matthew 27. We, we can also look at Mark 15. We can look at Ma uh, Luke 23 and see how they write about this time or this event of burial. Because now for me, that event of burial was the final event on the Good Friday. Because immediately after that good Friday, that event, they are entering into Sabbath. They are entering into rest. Now, Saturday or that Sabbath, it was quiet. There was nothing really taking place. They were observing Sabbath. They buried Jesus. And, and, and we, we, we get an understanding from the scripture that they had to hasten. They had to hurry to bury him so that Sabbath should not fall on them. Sabbath should not catch up with them. Hallelujah. That is why they were went quickly uh, to Pilate. They requested Pilate when you follow through those events that we need to do something to kill these guys, these criminals, because for to them, Jesus and these other guys were criminals. Now they approached uh, Pilate to say, give us an order that we should quickly hasten their death. Hallelujah. We should kill and execute them quickly. But I have good news for the devil, that the devil cannot execute Jesus. The devil cannot execute the Lord. Now, the Bible says they were then granted permission by Pilate. They went there, they broke the bones on the legs of these two other criminals on the left and the right. And when they got to Jesus, we are told that by the time they arrived to Jesus, the scripture tells us that he was already dead. Hallelujah. Now, when they arrived to him, he was already dead because they wanted to come and break the stone but the bible already prophesied that his bones are not going to be broken but when they arrived there they found him already dead now when we the scholarship or scholars informs us that the death of jesus occurred exactly at the same time when of of a sacrifice of the passover the the, the passover lamb during passover was sacrificed in between uh, the sixth hour and the ninth hour between 12 and 3 i mean between yes the, the, between the sixth hour and the ninth hour that was the time that jesus uh, the lamp was what, 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 what the lamp of the passover was sacrificed now jesus uh, we are told that at, at the sixth hour to the ninth hour he was then uh, being crucified and we are told by the scripture that at the ninth hour he uh, made this proclamation at the ninth hour the bible says mark 15 34 at the ninth hour jesus christ uh, with a loud voice uh, with a loud voice said eli eli lama sabakatan which means my god my god why have you forsaken me that prayer he made it up at the ninth hour now when you look at the ninth hour is three o'clock now three o'clock it was only three hours left to enter into sabbath because the days or the the, the the days of the jews were starting from six o'clock in the evening now when they approached Pilate, they said that the it's already uh, 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 three hours to go uh, that we enter Sabbath. Let's quickly execute these guys. And when they found him, they, he was already dead. I want to say to you, he is indeed the Passover lamb. He's the lamb for a household. He's indeed a Passover lamb. Now, it was not a coincidence that he died exactly at three o'clock or exactly around the time of the sacrifice of the lamb during the passover why because he is the very lamb of sacrifice that they have been uh, 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 waiting for he is the lamb of sacrifice that genesis 20 22 verse 7 was looking for when isaac asked his father i see the fire i see the knife where is the lamb of a burnt offering he is exactly that lamb that john John identify in John 1 29 saying behold the lamb that takes away the sin of the world the question that Isaac had was identified by John but it was fulfilled when the Bible says by Jesus in 1 Corinthians 5 7 when Jesus the Bible says clean out the old living that you may be a new lamp 
Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Now it was a question in the beginning in Genesis. It was identified by John uh, in, in John chapter number 1. But the fulfillment was when Jesus went to the cross. And the Bible tells us that he is Christ our Passover lamb. Now when you go to Revelation chapter number 5. You will see that he is the reason. The lamb is the reason for the praise. The lamb is the reason for the praise. Now they said worthy is the lamp, worthy is the lamp, worthy is the lamp. In heaven, before the throne of the lamp, there is praises going up and down. There is pra there is praises going on there before the throne of the lamp. Worthy is the lamp, worthy is the lamp. Now, he is the lamp of the Passover. That is why I'm saying it was good or it was really a, not a coincidence that he died exactly on the time of the sacrifices of the lambs. So that's what uh, blesses my heart when I begin to study scripture and study all other uh, uh, materials that helps us to understand the scripture. Hallelujah. He died exactly at the, at the time of the lambs. Now, he was not killed. The intention was uh, that they are going to kill him, but he knew the time to surrender his life. He was not killed. He gave uh, his his life he gave his life hallelujah now right there this is what I were focusing on that when uh, you are most needed where are you when you are most needed now we are told that now the time for burial came because he was already dead and here there were two guys who seemed not to be disciples of Jesus Christ according to the eyes of the people I'm sitting standing here talking to you uh, today you have already made conclusions and judgments about other people somewhere else the way you know them how you know them you've already concluded that these ones they cannot be the disciples of Jesus maybe because you know their lifestyle maybe because you know uh, uh, what they are busy doing maybe you know maybe because you know the groups uh, that they are involved with now Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus uh, were the members of the Sanhedrin they were the members of the Sanhedrin Joseph of Arimathea who, uh, uh, together with Nicodemus they were part of the Jewish concept hallelujah they were there when Jesus was tried hallelujah they were there when Jesus was tried actually John 7 records that uh, Nicodemus also advised that they should not just try him without giving a proper uh, a trial, uh, uh, without following all the regulations that govern the trial. Hallelujah. Now these two guys, Nicodemus and John Joseph of Arimathea, they were both, the Bible records that they were both rich men. Hallelujah. They were both rich men. But I like this, uh, that these two guys, the Bible tells us in the scriptures we have read and other gospels, uh, you, you, you're going to understand the importance when the matter is recorded by all gospel writers, then you know that this one is important. It is only two uh, that are recorded by, by all uh, gospel writers. You are going to do, look at the miracle of Jesus, uh, uh, of the multiplication of 5,000 bread, uh, making, I mean, uh, feeding, making a breaking bread to feed 5,000 people. That that miracle is recorded by all the gospel. Now, it shows how significant that miracle was. It shows how important it was. It is the only miracle in the gospel that is recorded by all four gospels. And now you are going to find the events of the passion. The events of the passion of Christ was recorded by all the the gospel writers. Now, the Bible, beloved, does not tell us more details about the life, the upbringing of Jesus. It does not really give us much details of his lifestyle between 12 years and 30 years. But the Bible seems to be focusing into this last part of his life, going uh, to fulfill the purpose. And that's what they write most about. Now, we hear that these two guys, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, were since seeking the Messiah. They were looking in expectation for the coming of the kingdom. Hallelujah. But to the eyes of those who lived by then, their contemporaries, it could not be possible because they are part of the council that crucifies Jesus. Because they are part of the council that tries Jesus. And that is why I'm saying don't be quick to judge because there is something awesome that the Holy Spirit is working behind the scene. Maybe at times we want to take the carry upon our shoulders how to make people 
people saved. We don't save people. The Holy Spirit does the work of saving people. It is the Holy Spirit who saves the people. Now, what we need to do is to keep on declaring the word to the people, is to keep on sharing the gospel to the people. And as we share the gospel to the people, the Holy Spirit will complete the work. Now, we are told that the Joseph of Arimathea was seeking, expecting the kingdom of God. He was waiting patiently for the kingdom of God. He was a disciple of Jesus. We also hear that Nicodemus was a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, the other thing that is uh, common between these two guys is that uh, they were both the secret followers uh, of Jesus, even though they were among the council of uh, of the Jewish. They were secretly following Jesus. Hallelujah. My beloved brother, my beloved sister, whoever you are, don't be quick to write people off. Don't be quick to just conclude that this one is a drunkard, is finished with him. Don't be quick to write people off because of their lifestyle, because of what you know about them. But take time and allow the Spirit of the Lord and to, 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 to reveal to you uh, people's lives, to reveal to you what is happening. Hallelujah. There is a time I'm telling you that that which is in secret is going to be revealed. Nothing can be seen in secret forever. There is nothing that shall remain in secret. Jesus told the disciples in Luke 12, he said, no, 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 you better live right. You better live straight. You better be the people of your words. Your no being your no. Your yes being your yes. Because there is no nothing that shall not be exposed even the things that which you do in private they shall be put in public hallelujah that was the words of Jesus uh, to the disciples uh, when he told them what to fear and what not to fear now here we realize that what Jesus said uh, to the disciples uh, it is true because now these guys have been secret disciples following Jesus secretly they are now exposed they expose themselves uh, they reveal themselves uh, that we actually have been following in this man they went boldly with courage they went to Pilate hallelujah now now they they, they moved out of their secrecy they moved out of their hiding and they publicly went to a pilot and say we want to participate in this man's life hallelujah where are you when you are no most needed where are you when you are most needed that's what i came to challenge you with that there are times that you are most needed and and most of the times at those times when you are most needed you are nowhere to be found it's okay it's fine that's why jesus went to the cross to die for our weaknesses, to die for our frailties, to die for our failures. Hallelujah. Where are you when you are most needed? Now they made a public, their private followership of Jesus. They made it public. They now went public. Hallelujah. I came to challenge somebody tonight that it's time to go public. You have been you have been hiding for too long. You have been locking yourself behind doors for too long. You have been you have been in secret for too long. But it is now time uh, to go public. It's time to go public of your belief. It's time to go public of your faith. It's time to go public of your relationship with Christ. It's time to go public of your love to Jesus Christ. It's time to go public. I came to challenge you that this is the time to go public. Hallelujah. You need to make sure that you go public. Don't remain in hiding forever. Joseph the Arimathea was a righteous man, was a good man. Joseph of Arimathea was the disciple. The gospel writers recorded for us. He was a disciple, sincerely seeking the kingdom of God, sincerely waiting for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And they went public. It is the doing of the Holy Spirit. I came to challenge somebody that the Holy Spirit will make you to go public. There's not going to be any time of hiding. The Holy Spirit is going to push some of us uh, into public spaces uh, where we are going to boldly declare that Jesus is the Lord. Where we are going to publicly declare that there is no one like our Messiah. That where we are going to publicly declare that he is risen. Where we are going to publicly declare that he is the King of Kings. He is the King of Glory. We are going public. Hallelujah. I'm came to challenge you. Where are you uh, when you are most uh, needed? Where are you when you are most needed? Uh, hallelujah. 
Joseph appeared and then Nicodemus came. Remember Nicodemus knew him as the teacher. He was his rabbi. Hallelujah. When he saw his body there, he thought, no, 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 this man once taught me. Because you must understand that discipleship is it involves some. There must be a discipline. There's no discipleship without a discipline. For us to have a discipleship, we need to follow a certain, a particular teaching. We need to follow a particular discipline. Now, Nicodemus knew that this man was the teacher coming from God. That's what he told him in the first Passover, that you are the teacher from God. You cannot be doing these things, speaking with this kind of authority. And you are ordinary. No, you are a man. You are a teacher from God. Now, now, Nicodemus acknowledged that at the time he saw the body there, he thought, no, 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 I'm going to spend. Hallelujah. Beloved, you need to understand that discipleship is costly. Hallelujah. It is costly to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, here are two guys. They are not even fearful. They are just giving their life. They say, we are going to go out in public and look at Pilate and say, give us the body of Jesus. Now, it is Costly. It will cost you friends uh, because I believe in the Sanhedrin they must have friends there. Now discipleship, if you want to become a disciple of Christ, uh, it will cost friends. Uh, if you want to become a disciple of Christ, uh, it will cost families. Uh, if you want to be a disciple of Christ, it is costly. Now that is why Jesus, beloved, was very careful. We would always tell the people that you need to know that if you want to follow me, it's not only about taking the cross, picking it up, but it's about picking it up and carrying it, bearing it. Another version says, you only, you not just only pick it up, you pick it up, but you also then bear it. Hallelujah. Now I came to say to somebody, that when you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to know that it is costly. Nicodemus came and he came with cost. He used his finances to bomb the body. This Armathia used the grave. I used to, I once spoke the word that he did not have a grave. Jesus never had a grave. Hallelujah. He's a man who never had a grave. I only two, know two men in the Bible who never had graves. The man called Enoch, the Bible says he was taken. The man called Elijah, the Bible says the will win to carry him. Now I came to tell you that Jesus he is the man with no grave. Hallelujah. He was in a borrowed grave. He laid there for a time being because he lives forever. He is not a dying type. Hallelujah. He lives forever. Now, Nicodemus came and they did not, they were not, they were not afraid. Of, they did not fear anything. They did not fear the cancer. They boldly went out. I challenge you that you need to know that discipleship will cost you many things, but you need to be prepared to live this life of a disciple. That is why many people do not want to be disciples because it is costly. You you, you, you pay with so many things you pay with your life you pay and and by the time you 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 need others you don't see them hallelujah jesus paid with his life for our sins and by the time he needed just the support the presence of the three guys they were sleeping by the time he needed the support of the 12 they all ran away at the garden when the enemy came the bible says they all ran away and we are told that john then took peter with her in john chapter number 18 they took peter with them they followed her at the distance following jesus christ as he was going to the house of annas the father in of Cephas. Cephas was the high priest. Now, Jesus was first tried at the house of Annas. He was kept, it was like a police cell. Then from the police cell, then he was going to take to a prison. Now from a prison or, or, or a court, and from court was then going to take be taken to a prison. That's how it appeared. Now, the Bible says John was known by Annas. John was known, and John then had access to go even when Jesus was tried at Anna's house because he had favor. John 18, verse number 16, you will find that there. That John went in, and it is by that time when Peter came, uh, Peter stood uh, by the door. And at the door, the Bible tells us that somewhere there, there was a fire, a fire of the enemy. John, uh, Peter then, uh, because he could not go in, the slave girl at the entrance saw Peter and says, are you not one of them? And, and when the slave girl, Peter said, no, no, I'm not one of them. And he, he went there, he warmed himself by the fire of the enemy. Beloved, the simple 
way of, 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 of moving out of our position is to conform to the standards of the world. Hallelujah. That's easy. That, 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 that's a subtle way of betraying Christ. It's when we start to conform to the standards of the world. Hallelujah. It's when we start to warm ourselves with the fire of the enemy. It's when we start to warm ourselves with the very same things that are that are an empty to us. Peter homed himself there, and then there, as he was there, he, he denied. They asked him again, he denied. The brother, who was a cousin of Malchus, whom Peter cut the ear, then that man came and said, you are one of them. And the Bible says, that's when Peter started crying, saying no. And from there, Jesus looked at him, and the, co the cock crowds, crowd, and Peter then wept bitterly hallelujah but i came to challenge you that out of those lessons of peter we see some failures of peter but there, there is also some positives that we can learn from a disciple called john hallelujah who went through because he is the one who went through with jesus even to the point of the cross he went right through with him there hallelujah now i believe that now it is john who is there but i'm also interested in these two guys joseph of Armathia and Nicodemus and of course the women that were with John they were also there they were women that we thank God for women that can follow Christ through and through they were there at the cross that's why Jesus could speak to John at the cross and saying son behold your mother mother behold your son the instruction was clear because John was there hallelujah so I challenge you that when you are most needed that's when true discipleship must be visible that's why you need to be a true disciple but by the time things are not good that's why you need to show forth yourself that now i'm going to reveal my disciple character i'm the disciple of christ now it is in times such as this where we need to go out there and reveal what we have learned from our master it is in times such as this where we need to go and declare and say i publicly declare jesus as my lord and savior i publicly believe that jesus Jesus is my Savior. Now, there are so many things that Jesus taught his disciples, but by then they are all of them away. They ran away. It is John and the women that are left there, and Joseph and, and, and Nicodemus. But most of them, they are gone. Another man that we believe is also became a believer, a believer was there, a centurion. Hallelujah. So these are the guys that are there. But these two guys, Joseph and Arma of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they did the great job of making sure that the boy of Jesus does not see decay. That the body of Jesus Christ is not just left there. They did follow the rituals of how to bear according to the Jews. Wrapped it the same way the body of Lazarus was wrapped. Hallelujah. When you study, you will see that they wrapped him. They wrapped his body the same way the body of Lazarus was wrapped. Hallelujah. And, and, and this one, because he's the Messiah, he's going to resurrect. And after resurrection, nobody must untie him. He untied ties himself. Lazarus is a man he was supposed to be untied but Jesus, no, he, he, he folded the clothes himself and left them there. He left everything there. Hallelujah. Now these disciples and the women were the ones that saw where Jesus was buried. Peter didn't know. The one who promised that I will follow, follow you through and through. He didn't know where Jesus was buried. The other guys didn't know where Jesus was buried. Thank God to the women who could go and tell Peter that yeah, you know what? The man is risen. They knew the grace because that is why the Bible tells us that in the morning of this resurrection they went to the grave. They could identify the grave where Jesus was laid. I came to challenge you that there are times you are needed most and you need to come out. There are so many things that Jesus taught and, and, and that the disciples still taught, that he taught his disciples. As I've already said that Discipleship must have a discipline. We know that John, the Bible says, John was, uh, his, his discipline was teaching about repentance, uh, uh, baptism unto repentance. Uh, but we also know that the Pharisees had disciples. Uh, the Bible tells us in Matthew 15, verse number 9, that in vain they do worship me, teachings, uh, uh, teaching as doctrines, uh, the commandments of men, that the disciples were teaching the doctrine 
uh, as the commandment of men as doctrine. They had disciples. We know that uh, that is why the disciples could come to Jesus. Says the disciples of John are fasting, and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting. But what about us now? Now you need to understand, Hallelujah, that the Pharisees had disciples. John the Baptist had disciples. Hallelujah, and the, the Pharisees were also teaching them that they were teaching them hypocrisy. Matthew twenty three verse two and three. The Bible tells us that the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. Why? Because they for they preach, but do not practice. These guys were hypocrites. They would teach you things that are, they are not doing. Hallelujah. Like in our times, you can relate. So many of us, we are teaching things that we do not do. Hallelujah. But tonight, we are going to look back to the cross and say, Father, thank you for the work of the cross. Thank you for what you have done. But Jesus taught. The Bible gives us one of the extensive teachings that he conducted in Matthew chapter number 5. You will see that he sat down like a teacher and he started teaching the beauty truth. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who mourn, both blessed are the blessed are the meek, blessed are they who hunger, blessed the pure in heart. He spoke those teachings. He said to them, Remember, you are the salt and the light. He was teaching the disciples in Matthew chapter number five. He said to them, I came to fulfill the law. Those are the teachings that Jesus taught them. He taught them about anger, he taught them about lust, he taught them about divorce, he taught them about oaths, he taught them about retaliation, he taught them about loving your enemies, he taught them about giving, he taught them about the Lord's prayer. He taught them about fasting. He taught them about laying up treasures in heaven. He taught them about not being anxious. He taught them about judging others. He taught them about asking and it shall be given. He taught them about gold and the golden ruler. He taught them about the tree and its fruit. He taught them about I never knew you. And he was teaching them that though there are some that, shall, that will come and say Jesus, Jesus, yet they are not known. He taught them about building upon the rock. Hallelujah. Jesus had a discipline. But what is important about Jesus he did not only have a, 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 a discipline, a teaching, but he was the embodiment of the teaching. The disciples saw him. Huh? They saw everything that he was teaching. It was unfolding. It was like a drama unfolding before Jesus. So I came with the challenge today that you need to arise and say, I'm going to be uh, uh, available when I'm needed most. I'm going to be like John who followed through all the way to the cross. I'm going to be like this woman who followed through all the way to the cross. If I were hiding, I would be like Joseph, the Adimathea, and Nicodemus, the rich man. I will come out of hiding because my Lord has been there for me. He has taught me things about life. It's time, beloved, to come out and go public. Where are you when you are most needed? That's the challenge I came to bring to you tonight, that it is time to understand Stand up, that you need to arise and go public and be there when you are needed. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus knew that these guys of mine, they sometimes are weak, they sometimes fade. So, I came to challenge you. Maybe you are not really there when you are needed, but it's okay. There is a time or a place called Galilee where all things start. Hallelujah. Jesus says to them, We must go back to where all it started. We must go back to where all it started. He said, I'm going to meet you in Galilee. I'm going to see you in Galilee. When I am raised, he says, you will all fall away. But there is a time coming where I shall meet up with you in Galilee. Where I'm going to make you strong enough. Now, this is what you need to understand. That when Jesus rose from the dead, he's no longer calling Peter. Uh, Peter. He's calling him Simon, uh, son of John. Hallelujah. Because Peter now, by running away, he revealed again his nature of not being stable. His nature of being uh, foul, uh, uh, weak and, and 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 Timeter. He revealed that nature. Simon, as Simon, he was a weak man, unstable man. But when Jesus saw him the first time after receiving the revelation of Jesus was, Jesus said to him, you are Peter, the rock. You are Petra. You shall be called Peter. And upon Petra, upon this rock, I shall build. Upon the revelation that you have received, I shall build my church. It was important that he could reveal himself first to them before he can give the mandate. Now he went, he said to them, we'll see you in Galilee. Because 
it is in Galilee that Jesus is going to then tell them that guys you need to be strong you need to go out there and make more disciples beloved I came to challenge you that this time is time to make disciples Jesus instruction is not to make members Jesus instruction is not to fill up heaven with members but it is to fill up the earth with disciples people that can stand through and through disciples beloved they will stand through and through irrespective of what is happening they will keep on standing now I came to challenge you tonight that you need to be a disciple because when you are the disciple of Christ you stand all the way hallelujah when you are the disciple of Christ you will stand that is why the disciples the 12 guys now after they meeting Jesus at Galilee from there it's no more turning back they were ready to face death they were ready to face persecutions they were ready to face anything we are living in a time of where there are so many threats where there are so many news where there are so many news fake news truthful news they are going all over the place there are so many rumors and these people that say are disciples they are fearful but i came to challenge you that it is time to arise and be a disciple and declare that jesus is christ be bold enough going out public and say there is nothing even when their eyes were taken out they still stood for the lord and they still could see visions even when they were promised to die they said i rather die with my head upside down that's how strong and bold they became after Jesus meeting them in Galilee correcting their weaknesses telling them that guys it's time to be disciples and go out there and make disciples I came to challenge you that this work that I saw this event of burying to me it revealed two guys who were true disciples people that are that are present and available when they are needed most where are you when you are most needed where are you when you are most needed are you a disciple a disciple when it's most needed comes a disciple when he's most needed he knows that for me to follow Christ I must deny myself I cannot follow him unless I'm willing to die Jesus told them that guys if you want to be my disciple here is the thing Following Christ is like a person who's building a house. Jesus said you need to calculate the cost of being a disciple. Calculate it. And from there he gave them the parable. He says otherwise you will start and not finish. Like a person who wants to build a house without planning. When you want to be a follower of Christ. Jesus because he wants true people. He reveals to them that you need to know that this journey is costly. This journey is not easy. But praise yourself. And say, I'm going to follow through and to calculate the cost so that you are not going to quit along the way. Calculate the cost so that you're not going to give up when you hear about other things that we are hearing about. Calculate the cost so that you're not going to give up when they promise you that tomorrow we are dying. Calculate the cost when they are telling you that, you know, this sickness is even coming to you. Calculate the cost. When you have calculated the cost, you are not going to give up and you're going to follow him truly. Where are you when you are most needed? That's the question I came to leave with you tonight. So that we can raise in you a character, a quality of a true disciple. Somebody who calculates the cost and says, my cost are not going to hold me back. That is why Nicodemus was not held back by money. He gave the money to embalm the dead body. My Lord, hallelujah. He was not kept back by anything. He gave, Joseph Armathia gave his grave. These guys were rich men. Hallelujah. We want to challenge you this evening to arise when you are needed most. Where are you when you are most needed? Jesus was looking for the support of these guys. But he knew that they are weak, they will fail. When he died at the cross, he calculated their sin. Hallelujah. And God Almighty came through for them. That's the question I'm leaving with you tonight. And make up, just introspect yourself. Where are you when you are most needed? I want to pray. I want to pray. Father, I thank you that this season, this time, you're going to help us, my Father, to realize that it's time for the disciples to stand. It's time for the true followers of Christ to stand. I pray that Lord give everyone who is a follower of Christ, who is a true disciple, courage to stand and stand boldly and defend the gospel and share their faith and spread the message of salvation 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Spirit of the living God, that this event that revealed the character or the discipleship of Nicodemus and Joseph Armathia, I pray, may all those who follow Christ come out of their hiding places, come out of their caves, come out of their secret places and go out public. Go public in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, God Almighty, may they go out and declare Jesus is Lord. May they go out and pray. May they go out and call on the name of the Lord because they are true followers. I pray in times such as this, you will raise true disciples, my father. Those who were impacted by the message of the gospel, raise them, my God, so they can go out and declare the good news of Jesus in the powerful name of Jesus. I bless you and I thank you. I give you the praise. I give you the honor. I want to make another prayer point that you pray and say, Lord, nothing shall hold me back. Nothing shall hold me back. Nothing at all. I will calculate the cost and I'm ready uh, to uh, follow Jesus even if it's costly. Salvation came free. Freely it was given. But to follow Christ, to become a disciple, it's a cost. It's costly. Now I want to pray. Father, how I pray that God Almighty will help your people to realize the cost in following you and be ready to follow you right through and through because we are uh, moving and uh, approaching. Uh, the times are converging, my God. We pray as the times are converging as there is a convergence you will help those that are disciples to stand strong because those that are disciples who are standing strong there are crowns awaiting them oh god almighty there are incorruptible crowns awaiting them there are crowns my father of righteousness awaiting them crowns of joy there are crowns of glory that are waiting them those crowns my father we're supposed to put it on our hearts in the name of jesus Christ. help us to calculate the cost and put our treasure in heaven where well, it's not going to be destroyed by moth. I pray, O oh Spirit of the living God, as we calculate the cost, nothing shall hold us back, but we shall break out. We shall break forth and we shall, we shall support the kingdom. We shall bring forth the kingdom. We shall deliver the message of the kingdom. We shall go out there and make disciples. Hallelujah. One last more prayer point I want to leave with you. That you need to understand that discipleship, they don't, disciples don't make themselves. Disciples are called. Jesus called people and made them disciples. Now, disciples cannot make themselves. We need to call them. Now, that is why the mandate is clear. Go out into all nations. Call people into the saving grace of Jesus. When you have called them, teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. Hallelujah. Teach them. Make them disciples. Hallelujah. Now, disciples are called. I'm going to pray that we're going to make it our point that you will get one people, get few people, get a group of people, get a large number of people, and let's teach them, disciple them, build the relationship with them, and say, we want you to know Christ. Can you, you are you ready for the prayer? But Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that Lord God Almighty you will help us even as leaders you will help us even as believers God Almighty that we will go out there and make disciples we will go out there and call those that are out there so they can come on board and be disciples that the message of Jesus Christ should transform them in Jesus name I have prayed Father I even want to thank you for the, everyone who has received this word tonight that God may you help all of us that we come to realization that there is a time when we are needed most. And that time, it will reveal our true discipleship. Help us to show that we are true disciples in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Maybe out there, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I would love to pray with you. I would love to pray with you. And God Almighty will do it. Please follow me with this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I thank you. For taking away my sins. I now believe. That you are my Lord. And then I accept you. In my heart. That you reign in me. I surrender my life. Unto you. I give myself. Unto you. In Jesus name. I thank you. That I am born again. I am the child of God. I have believed in my heart. I have confessed with my mouth. That Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. When you have made that prayer point, you are saved. You are born again. You are the child of God. I'm going to challenge you to please visit all our social media platforms. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter, Facebook, 
Instagram, YouTube, and also visit our website, shakainatelenakel.co.za. And subscribe, fill in your details there, follow us, and whatever that you are communicating there, it will also come through to you. And the good Lord will do you well. Thank you so much for following through. Tomorrow we are continuing, 10 o'clock. We are finishing off the Passover, the Good Friday conference. 10 o'clock, Apostle Dr. Daniel Setha will be here. And in the evening also, our mother or all of us, or both of them, they will be here. Our prophetess, M.G. Tessa. Uh, I want to challenge you to stay tuned. And the good Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day or blessed night, wherever you are. God bless you. Shalom.